My name's Stella. Um, I'm a fine art photographer and I'm the artist in residence for the website teenmentalhealth.org. I work with youth who are in the hospital to make photography projects. I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder when I was 20 years old. Bipolar disorder is a mood disorder where the sufferer experiences either very elevated moods where they have you know, grandiose feelings, uh, a lot of self-confidence, speak very quickly, get a lot done, don't need a lot of sleep or food, or they go through these depressive episodes where you know, it's very difficult to function, it's hard to leave the house, it's hard to get out of bed, it's really, you know, life is not enjoyable anymore. And people with bipolar disorder swing between these two extremes. I stopped going to class at school. I just came to, went to the school so my parents thought I was going and sat in the library and read Chekhov. I started to cut myself because I didn't know how to deal with the feelings of pain and I found that if I cut myself, at least I was able to get through my day. Um, it can be the absolute worst thing in the world when you're either really depressed or you're too elevated because that's not very comfortable either to have a really racing thoughts and inability to stop doing things, inability to sleep, all these ideas is actually kind of exhausting physically and mentally. It does feel like you're trapped because since the disease is in your mind, like it, it's very hard to remove yourself from your mind. It's like, you know, you're in a prison in your head. So, you know, it, it's sort of, it's heaven and hell. So I went to see a, psychi a new psychiatrist in the adult system. I got the right diagnosis after four years of basically only being medicated for my depression but not my mania. It was such a relief to be able to put a name on it. And then if I have a name for it, maybe you know I could make it better. But it was also very sad because I was like, okay, this isn't just a depressive episode. This is gonna be something I'll have for the rest of my life. Youth who want to recover from bipolar disorder need a multifaceted treatment. They need their talk therapy, they need medication, they need social supports, they need some sort of outlet, whether that be art or sports. Like they need something like that that makes them want to keep going. I think early education is a really huge key. If I had known about bipolar disorder, if I had known the symptoms, if I had known the symptoms of major depression, if I had known the long-term implications that self-harm can have on your life, um, I think you know things could have been quite a bit different. Uh, maybe I would have caught it earlier, or my family would have caught it earlier, or my teachers would have caught it earlier. When really, because I, I wasn't treated until I was at rock bottom, until I couldn't go on anymore. Um, so I really think early um, like education and early intervention are the keys. Although it is a chronic illness, it's a very treatable illness, and a lot of people live successfully with bipolar disorder. The only reason you don't hear about it is because of the stigma. Being treated differently, primarily by medical professionals, um, because of my mental illness, being treated like less of a person, being treated like it it's not as important. Um, I have a lot of scars in my arms and some people have made some kind of cruel comments about that. But what I find the most stigmatizing is when they stare at me and they stare at the scars and they're clearly staring at me and they don't ask, they don't give me a chance to justify that or explain to them why I am, why I am that way. And I would really like the opportunity to just explain it rather than have them stare at me and make assumptions about who I am. I do believe that our ideas about mental illness are changing. And a good example of this is the Youth Against Stigma coffee houses we've been doing. You know, 10, 20 years ago, like this kind of stuff would have been really shut away. And now we're in a public cafe, you know, putting up artwork that's explicitly about mental health, it's explicitly about dealing with it and like the dark side of it and, you know, recovery as well. And it's in a public menu, you know, like that would have never happened not all that long ago, so I'd love to see like what we're doing, just you know, keep going. One of the better things I've seen like come out of sort of the coffee houses is uh, there was an individual that I worked with when she was in the hospital, and she you know, sort of talked about how her sister didn't really understand, and uh, she felt very isolated. She you know, lived out of the city, lived in a small town, 
And then I saw her bring her sister to one of the coffee houses and she was taking her around the room and she showed her the, you know, the person had actually made artwork that we put up on the wall and she was like, look, was showing her sister, look, I made this and this is how I feel about this and showed her all the other work and they both stayed and like watched the show together. And for once, you know, the mentally ill person who feels so isolated was able to say, well, come into my world, you know, come be part of my experience when, you know, usually it's sort of everybody else going, you know, you know, come out of that world, understand what it's like to be normal. In the future, I'd like to be able to do more art shows. I'd like to be able to make more work about mental illness. I'd like to be able to organize like more group shows and like have this Youth Against Stigma coffee house movement that we do become part of a larger movement. In a stigma-free world, the youth that I work with would have way fewer barriers to getting well than they do now. And so, you know, in a stigma-free world, it would be like equal opportunity for people with mental illness to get better and to have productive lives and to be respected.